Krebs cycle is very important cycle. The Krebs cycle named in honor of the crab, Hans Krebs, who worked out the intermediate step in this pathway, also known as the citric acid cycle or tricarboxylic acid cycle, is the second of the three pathways involved in the fuel catabolism and ATB production. It utilizes the molecules, molecular fragments formed during the carbohydrate, protein, and fat breakdown, and it produces carbon dioxide, hydrogen atoms bound to coenzyme and small amounts of ATP. The enzyme for this pathway are located in the mitochondria. Most of these enzymes are soluble enzymes in the inner mitochondrial compounds. The primary molecule entering at the beginning of the Krebs cycle is acetyl coenzyme A. Coenzyme A, a precursor of acetyl coenzyme A is derived from the B vitamin pantothenic acid and its primary functions is to transfer the two carbon acid carbon acetyl group from one molecule to another these acetyl group comes either from pyruvate which we which as we have just seen in the end product of glycolysis or from the breakdown of the fatty acids and some amino acids as we shall see in the later section pyruvate upon entering mitochondria from the cytosol undergoes the following reaction to produce acetyl coenzyme A. Pyruvate plus coenzyme A plus NAD ion is equal to acetyl CoA plus CO2 plus NADH plus H ion. Pyruvate, this is pyruvate. plus coenzyme A plus NAD ion is equal to acetyl coenzyme a plus CO2 plus plus carbon dioxide plus NADH plus hydrogen ion. Pyruvate plus coenzyme A plus NAD ion is equal to is react acetyl coenzyme A plus carbon dioxide plus NADH plus hydrogen ion. Here in this equation hydrogen ion released pyruvate plus coenzyme A plus NAD ion reacts and make acetyl coenzyme A and produce carbon dioxide and a TH and a DH plus hydrogen ion. Note that this reaction produced the first molecule of carbon dioxide. <coughs> we have seen from thus for in the pathway of fuel catabolism and that hydrogen atoms have been transferred to NAD.
hydrogen atoms transfer to NAD. Hydrogen ion. These are the hydrogen ion can transfer to NAD. This is the hydrogen ion with NAD. We will make use of this later, later fact. Later, the Krupp cycle begins with the transfer of acetyl group of acetyl coenzyme A to four carbon molecules. To four carbon molecules, oxalic. oxaloacetate to form the six carbon molecules to form the six carbon molecules citrate at the third step in the cycle one molecule of carbon dioxide is produced and again the fourth step thus two carbon atoms enter the cycle in the form of this style Group attached to coenzyme A and now two carbon, two carbons although not the same one, have left in the form of carbon dioxide. Note also that the oxygen that appears in the carbon dioxide is not derived from molecular oxygen but from a carboxyl group of Krebs cycle intermediates. in the remainder of the cycle the four carbon molecules form formed in reaction four is modified through a series of reactions to produce the four carbon molecules oxaloacetate which form become available to accept the another acetyl group and repeat the cycle now we come to a very crucial fact in addition to producing carbon dioxide intermediate in the krebs cycle donate hydrogen atom to the coenzyme nad ion and fad two hydrogen atoms are transferred to nad ion in each of step 3 4 and 8 and to fad in reaction 6 these hydrogen will be transferred from coenzyme to oxygen in the next stage of fuel metabolism oxidative phosphorylation since oxidative phosphorylation is necessary for regeneration of the hydrogen free from free form of these coenzyme the krebs cycle can operate only under aerobic conditions there is no pathway in the mitochondria that can remove the hydrogen from the coenzyme under the anaerobic conditions so for we have said nothing of how the carbon krebs cycle contribute to the formation of atp in fact the krebs cycle directly produced only one high energy nucleic nucleotide triphosphate this occurs during reaction 5 in which an organic phosphate is transformed to guanine guanine diphosphate gdp to form guanine triphosphate gtp the hydrolysis of gtp like that of atp can provide energy for some energy requiring reactions in additions the energy in gtp energy requires reaction in addition the energy in gtp can be transferred to atp by reaction reaction gtp guan guanosine diphosphate plus adp adenosine diphosphate is 
inversely proportional to GDP plus ATP. GDP, guanidine diphosphate plus ATP is, is a reversible action, GDP plus ATP. This reaction is reversible and energy is in ATP can be used in the form of GDP. We can say GDP plus ADP, guanidine triphosphate plus adenosine diphosphate ADP is a reversible reaction in GDP guanidine diphosphate guanosine diphosphate plus adenosine triphosphate adenosine triphosphate plus GDP can make a reaction and release energy with GDP plus ADP this reaction is reversible and the energy in ATP can be used to form GDP from GTP from GDP. One additional GTP is required for this molecule's role, role in protein synthesis and signal transduc transduction. The re retrait the formation of GTP is the only mole mechanism by which ATP is directly formed within the Krebs cycle why then the, is the Krebs cycle so important because the hydrogen atoms transferred in the cycle to the concerned enzyme are used in the most pathway oxidatively phosphoryl phosphorylation to form large amount of ATP, the net result of the catabolism of, of one acetyl group from acetyl coenzyme A by way of the Krebs cycle can be written as acetyl coenzyme A plus 3NADIN plus FAD plus GDP plus PI plus two water molecules is equal to two carbon dioxide plus coenzyme A plus NADH plus 3G. We can understand with this equation a style coenzyme A plus NADN plus FAD plus FAD plus GDP plus GDP plus PI plus two water molecules are react and make two carbon dioxide ions, two atom of carbon dioxide plus coenzyme A, coenzyme A plus 3 NADH plus 3 and ADH plus 3 hydrogen ion, 3 hydrogen ion plus FADH2 plus FADH2.
to plus GDP plus GTP. This is the chemical reaction. We can understand this reaction acetyl coenzyme A plus 3 NAD ion plus FAD. Acetyl coenzyme A plus NAD ion plus FAD plus GDP plus PI plus 2 hydrogen atom, 2 hydrogen, sorry, 2 H2O is equal to 2 carbon dioxide plus coenzyme A plus NADH plus 3 hydrogen ion plus FADH2 plus GTD. This is not DGD, this is the DGP. One more important should be noted, although the major function of the Krebs cycle is the provision of the hydrogen atoms to the oxidation phosphorylation pathway, some of the organic molecules, especially several types of amino acids required by cell, oxaloacetate is one of the intermediate used in this manner when a molecule of oxaloacetate is removed from the Krebs cycle in the process of forming amino acid, it is not available to combine with the acetate fragment of acetyl coenzyme A at the beginning of the cycle. Thus, there must be a way of replacing the oxaloacetate and other Krebs cycle intermediate that are consumed to synthetic pathway carbohydrate provide one source of oxaloacetate replacement by following reaction which convert pyruvate into oxaloacetate con contrast this reaction to equation. <coughs> Pyruvate plus carbon dioxide plus ATP. Pyruvate plus carbon dioxide plus ATP. Oxaloacetate plus ADP. oxaloacetate plus ADP plus PI. Oxaloacetate plus ADP plus PI Certain amino acids, dryers as, as, as well C, also can be used to form oxaloacetate and other Krebs cycle intermediate. Oxidative phosphorylation, oxidative formulation provides the third and quantitatively most important mechanism by which energy dried from fluid molecules can be transferred to ATP. The basic principle behind the pathway is simple. The energy transferred to ATP is dried from the energy released when hydrogen combines with the molecular oxygen to form water. The source of hydrogen is the NADH plus hydrogen ion and FADH2 plus coenzyme molecules. The net reaction in the involving NADH plus hydrogen ion is half oxygen plus ADH H2O plus NAD53. Mm -hmm. 
one mole of ATP from ADP and PI, there is enough energy released in the above reaction to form more than one molecule of ATP. The protein that mediate oxidative phosphorylation are located in the mitochondria, but unlike the enzymes of the Krebs cycle, which are soluble enzymes in the matrix compartment, the protein that proteins that mediate oxidative phosphorylation are embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. These proteins can be divided into two groups. Number one, these those that mediate the series of reactions by which hydrogen is transferred to molecule oxygen, and number two, the those that couple the energy released by these reactions to the synthesis of ATP. Most of the first group of proteins contain iron and copper cofactor forming proteins known as cytochromes because in pure form they are brightly colored they resemble in their structure the red iron containing hemoglobin molecule which binds and the oxygen in the blood the cytochrome forms the compound of the electrons transfer transport chain in which two electrons from the hydrogen atoms are initially transferred entire transferred either from NADH plus hydrogen ion plus FADH2 to one of the element in the electron. The transport chain, these electrons are then successively transferred to other elements in the chain. Often to or from an iron or copper ion until the electrons are finally trans to molecule oxygen which then combines with hydrogen ion proteins to form water. These hydrogen ion like the electrons come from the hydrogen bearing coenzyme having been released from them early in the transport chain when the electrons from the hydrogen atoms are transferred to the cytochromes. In addition to transfer the coenzyme hydrogens to water, this process regenerates the hydrogen free from the coenzymes, which then becomes available to accept two more hydrogen from intermediary reactions. Thus, the electrons transport chain provide the aerobic mechanism from regeneration regenerating the hydrogen free form of this coenzyme whereas the described earlier the arabic mitochondrial mechanism is coupled in the formation of lactate at each step along the electron transport chain small amount of energy are released which in total amount to the full 53 kilocalorie per mole released from a direct reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. Because this is this energy is released in small steps, it can be linked to the synthesis of several molecules of ATP, each of which repairs only 7 kilocalorie per mole. Overall, 40% of energy released from the chain of reactions is transferred to ATP. The remaining 60% appearing as heat. At three points, along the electron transport chain, ATP is formed. The mechanism by which this occurs is known as the chemiosmotic 
hypothesis the electrons are transformed along along the cytochrome chain the energy released is used to more hydrogen ions from the matrix to site cytocyclic side of the inner mitochondrial membrane thus producing a source of potential energy in the form of point along with the chain com- complex of protein forms a chain a channel through which the highly concentrated hydrogen ions on the cytoplasmic side of membranes can flow back to the matrix side and the process transfer their potential energy to formation of atp from adp and pi metabolism the sum total of chemical processes that occurs in living organisms resulting in growth production of energy elimination of waste waste materials etc and anabolism is that build up of complex molecules next is catabolism catabolism means breakdown of complex molecules fate of organic building block in atp metabolism organic building block molecules monosaccharides amino acids acetate nucleotide base atp and adp plus pi make energy this is the catabolism and uh, when produce energy call anabolism and when energy breakdown from atp to adp plus pi is called catabolism and this produce carbon dioxide and h2o and in condition of anabolic process polymers and other energy rich molecules are produced cellular respiration c6h12o6 plus 6 oxygen plus 36 adp plus 36 pi is equal to 6 co2 plus 6 h2o plus 36 atp this in the cell chemical reactions 6 c6 h12o6 plus 6 co2 plus 36 adp plus 36 pi reacts with each other and make carbon dioxide plus water plus 36 atp this release energy in the form of atp basic steps involved in metabolism number 1 glycolysis glycolysis means the breakdown of glucose lysis means breakdown and next step is acetylcholine a formation and third step is krebs cycle and fourth step is electron transport system whichever electrons in a iron condition and transported this is known as electron transport system overview of glycolysis when glucose break down in atp and nadh plus h2 made pyruvic acid and two acetyl coenzyme formation of acetyl coenzyme and break down into co2 nadh plus two hydrogen in next step krebs cycle in in a cycle nadh plus hydrogen fads2 and other electrons in a gut electrons transport chain when different electrons transported oxygen and hydrogen and produce energy in 32 or 34 atp 
other metabolic pathway number 1 fat number 2 glycogen number 3 protein we can take first fat fat break down into two stages fatty acid and glycerol fatty acid further reach in acetyl group in the cells and involve in krab cycle and produce 2 atp with the help of carbon breakdown pyruvate and also glycerol electron transport system many atp releases we can take glycogen glycogen also break down in the glucose and uh, pro- pyruvate which is derived from glycerol and also from glucose and uh, break down in carbon break down and ma- make acetyl group and reached in krebs cycle and uh, produce energy and transport electron transport system may make and many, many energies molecules we can take third proteins proteins make amino acid and carbon breakdown nh3 ammonia urea waste pro, produce urea as as a waste product but carbon breakdown involve in acetyl group and help in krebs cycle and also produce atp chemical energy high energy electrons glycolysis glucose when break down known as glycolysis it breaks in pyruvate and uh, reads to krebs cycle and in the chemical changes and chemical energies electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation mito in 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 presence of in this in within mitochondria why the oxidative phosphorylation this release atp and also from krebs cycle atp produced and uh, glycosyl mitochondrial cristi why this substrin substrate level phosphorylation atp also produce in this case glycolysis first of all glucose glucose break down in 2 atp and 2 adp and in next stage 2 pg al and further break down in 2 nad and 2 nadh and uh, 4 adp and 4 atp and next in the next step of with chemical reactions two pyruvate formation and carbon releases two atp two nadh two pyruvate molecules releases and produce energy balance sheet for glycolysis input glucose 2 adp plus pi plus nad ion output pyruvate atp and nad two pyruvate two atp and two nad transaction reaction cytosol transport proteins pyruvate and in mitochondrion nadh and hydrogen ion carbon dioxide release coenzyme a also produce and further acetyl coenzyme a formation transition reaction krebs cycle citric acid transition reactions citric acid cycle as early i described in the equations and the formulations citric acid cycle 3 nad 3 nad cycle fad plus fads2 two carbon dioxide release adp produce atp in citric acid cycle 
कोएंजाइम ए कार्बन रिलीजेस एसिटाइल कोएंजाइम ए कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड रिलीजेस एन ए डी एच प्लस एन ए डी आयन एंड मेक पायरोवेट अल्टीमेटली रिलीज एनर्जी इन फॉर्म ऑफ ए टी पी क्रैप साइकिल साइट्रिक एसिड साइकिल नेक्स्ट इज द बैलेंस शीट फॉर द ट्रांजिशन ऑफ रिएक्शन ऑफ क्रैप साइकिल इनपुट इज टू पायरोवेट टू ए डी पी प्लस टू पी आई एट एन ए डी आयन प्लस टू एफ ए डी एंड द आउट ऑफ आउटपुट ऑफ दिस केमिकल रिएक्शन इज सिक्स कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड टू ए टी पी एनर्जी एट एन ए डी एच एंड टू एफ ए डी एच टू क्रैप साइकिल वी कैन डिस्क्राइब मल्टीपल टाइम्स इन द क्रैप साइकिल इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स एंड कॉम्प्लिकेटेड साइकिल हैंडल्स अदर सबस्टेट इंटरमीडिएट मॉलिक्यूल्स यूज प्रोटीन्स एंड लिपिड्स रिप्लेनिशमेंट ऑफ इंटरमीडिएट नेसेसरी एसिटाइल को एंजाइम है अक्जलिक एसिड फॉर्मेशन एंड अल्टीमेटली प्रोड्यूस एनर्जी क्रेप साइकिल टेक टू कंप्लीट साइकिल्स एट स्टेप्स ईच विद एन एंजाइम अक्जलो एसिटिक एसिड को एसिटाइल को एंजाइम है and acetyl coenzyme in three step and third step we can say this is the third step of xaloacetic acid nadh fadh2 and the citric acid carbon dioxide release nadh and atp produce co2 and nadh this cycle is a circular cycle producing acetyl coenzyme a and citric acid and releases carbon dioxide and produce atp oxaloacetic acid oxidative phosphorylation described earlier each glucose molecules carbon dioxide six molecules and nds 10 molecules fads 2 atp 4 molecules electron transport system co2 6 NADH10, FADH2, ATP4 used to make ATP. NADH and FADH2 produce energy with the help or with the main function of ATP. Electron transport system, proton discharge electron receptors generate. atp this is the fourth step fourth step of the krebs cycle electron transport system nadh nad hydrogen ion and in the lumen hydrogen ion 2h half oxygen and water release in the mitochondria and matrix in intermembranous spaces hydrogen ion releases and uh, next condition mitochondrial matrix intermembranous spaces hydrogen ion reaches many hydrogen ion reaches in the intermediate membrane spaces and uh, in mit mitochondrial matrix hydrogen ion adp plus pi atp and hydrogen resided and this atp produce energy electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation electrons are delivered to a o forming o attracts hydrogen ion to form h2o electrons are delivered to o forming o negative this is the oxygen ion oxygen ion with the help of hydrogen ion to form h2o electronic energy gradient transfer to energy from nadh plus hydrogen ion and fadh2 oxygen releases large amount of energy 
This energy is released in a stepwise manner through the electron transport chain. ATP synthetase. Two major parts connected by rod rotor in the inner mitochondrial membrane, nerve in the matrix, works like an iron pump in reverse. Net ATP yield 36, 34 to 36 molecules ATP for every glucose molecules produced about 40 percent of efficiency. ATP yield from the basically glucose breakdown or yeah, other, other we can say the glucose molecules produce ATP in 30 4 to 36 molecule ATP for every glucose molecules or otherwise we can say one glucose molecule produce 34 to 36 ATP molecules and produce energy. Overall ATP production, electron transport system 34, citric acid cycle 2, glycolysis 2, Subtotal 38 and NDH transport into mitochondrion minus 2, total is 36. Fermentation, fermentation is the anaerobic respiration, lactic acid fermentation, lactic acid fermentation in case of lactic acid fermentation, glucose breakdown we can say this is the glycolysis and make NADH and NADH ion, NAD ion and NADH ion and make two pyruvate and further it is NADH and NAD ion lactic acid fermentation, two, lexic, two lexic, lactic acid produce in this condition. Glucose breakdown, glycolysis, and NAD ion and NADH ion. NAD ion plus NADH ion produce lactic acid fermentation and produce two lactic acid with the help of two pyruvate. Glucose, anaerobic respiration, aerobic respiration. What is glucose? Glucose is the basic. Glucose in a anaerobic condition makes pyruvate in both condition and NO2, ethanol or lactate. Aerobic respiration with the oxygen acetyl coenzyme with, with the help of Krebs cycle in mitochondria. An athlete who wishes to reach the next stage very fast and an athlete who the uh, for example an athlete join at, at, at an academy next day he wants to become an international athlete he may uh, try to he may try to do a lot of training in a one day or one day or uh, one month so this type of tra athletes who is more susceptible for overtraining syndrome now, athlete with little training experience or an athlete who is not doing any training and uh, one day he started doing a lot of training and these people are also susceptible for this overtraining syndrome. Now, next is highly motivated athlete, even a highly motivated goal, in, goal oriented individuals who does a lot of training to this also, these people are also susceptible, these are also risk population. Now, if Actually, exercise regime has to be designed by a trained person or a trained coach or a trained trainer. So, this type of, uh, if an, an exercise regime is 
designed by athlet himself this population all is also more susceptible to overtraining syndrome now what are the risks what are the risk for overtraining syndrome the first thing is that there will be prolonged poor performance will be there there will be associated injury lots of injuries will be there associated illness and later it leads to a premature retirement of the athlete from the concerned sports usually its symptoms can be classified into four types a physiological symptom psychological symptom immunological symptom and biological symptom psychologically physiologically we can see there will be a decreased performance decreased performance of the athlete and he won't be able to meet the previous performance overtraining syndrome the people with overtraining syndrome he won't be able to meet the previous performance and there will be a decrease in the performance and even if he is taking rest the recovery will be prolonged and decreased muscle strength and work capacity will be there and there will be loss of coordination and person feel like, feel like he is in chronic fatigue there will be chronic fatigue can be seen in this type of people now psychologically there may be chance of depression general apathy and uh, then emotional instability may be there difficulty in concentrating and fear of competition may be there in this uh, overuse syndrome immunologically increased susceptible because immune level will be will come down that means that there will be an increased susceptibility to different illness there will be increased susceptibility to uh, cold and allergies flu like illness may be there mild scratches that also even that also heals very slowly there is small chance of bacterial infection is also there once you see the biochemical changes even biochemical changes are also seen there will be negative nitrogen balance will be there there will be depressed muscle glycogen concentration will be there decreased muscle glycogen concentration will be there all the minerals in all the important minerals will be decreased especially zinc cobalt aluminum selenium and copper all these elements all these minerals uh, the concentration of these minerals will uh, decreased and there will be elevated cortisol level will be there and low free testosterone will be there so the biochemical changes commonly seen are the get is there is a negative nitrogen balance decreased muscle glycogen mineral depletion elevated cortisol and free testosterone level also will be low it affects the autonomic nervous system also the there will be some abnormal response in of the ans autonomic nervous system there will be increased resting heart rate will be there there will be an increase increased uh, blood pressure will be there loss of appetite will be there decreased body mass sleep disturbances emotional instability and elevated basal metabolic rate so once we hormonal response there will be decreased level of corticosteroid there will be decreased level of testosterone will be the increased cortisol and decreased thyroxine so decreased level of testosterone and cortisol and it will leads to an increased protein catabolism and increased uh, blood urea and later leads to loss in lean body mass so hormonal responses to overtraining there will be decreased level of cortisol uh, testosterone we already discussed decreased level of testosterone decreased level of increased level of cortisol and decreased level of uh, 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 thyroxine and this will leads to a increase in protein catabolism and increase in blood urea and later leads to loss in lean body mass there are two types of types of overtraining syndrome there are two types of overtraining syndrome commonly seen sympathetic overtraining syndrome and parasympathetic overtraining syndrome sympathetic overtraining uh, training syndrome in this case there will be an increased pulse rate at resting level at rest and there is decreased body mass there will be disturbance of sleep there is decreased pulse recovery will be there there is decreased appetite and emotional instability will be there but in case of parasympathetic overtraining syndrome 
there will be progressive anemia low bp will be there digestive disturbances early fatigue low resting pulse rate fast uh, fast return of the heart rate to the basal levels decreased uh, then altered immune infection and high fatigue rating etc will be the in case of parasympathetic overtraining syndrome so there are two types of overtraining syndromes are the the first one is the sympathetic overtraining syndrome and parasympathetic overtraining syndrome in case of sympathetic overtraining syndrome stress response that proceeds exhaustion may predominantly affect the speed and power of the athlete and athletes who are younger and also seems to be related and related to inappropriately intensive training sessions and too much psycho emotional stresses but in case of parasympathetic over uh, over uh, stress syndrome over training syndrome is associated with exhaustion of the neuroendocrine system may predominantly affect the endurance athlete so parasympathetic mainly affecting the endurance athletes now there are diagnostic complications that is here in this case uh, in overtraining syndrome usually some symptom may predispose to other symptoms some may disappear while others may may appear in their place so different types of activity produces different types of syndrome so there is no clear point where the training fatigue finishes and overtraining uh, begins so there are lots of diagnostic complications are there now if you are giving too intense training and too high training volume for an excessive period of time so it will be considered as an excessive train now body try to recover once again we are giving you are giving the stress the volume again when again you are giving the volume again the training volume again the it will leads to stay as a state called staleness and again you are keep on giving the training there will be more catabolism than anabolism and later leads to an overtraining syndrome so this is the development of overtraining that is if you are giving an intense training for a longer period of training there will be fatigue or excessive training and fatigue again you are giving the body will leads to staleness and again you are giving the training it will leads to an overtraining syndrome now three things we have to clear here that is the first thing is overload overreach and overtraining so three related terms are there so first one is overload overreaching and overtraining the first one is overload we study already discussed regarding an overload principle once you are giving a training you have to give an overload if you are giving an overload a training stimulus there will be there will be appropriate response will be there and training stim adequate recovery will be there and training or again you are giving training in the level increases and it will increase the performance next is next term is overreaching if you are that is first of all once you are giving an overload you will give time for adequate recovery again training increases again giving an adequate recovery and that is the increase of training will be appropriate then you are giving adequate recovery time it will improve the performance it this is called overload now next one is overreaching overreaching means you are giving a training stimulus and the recovery is not inadequate again you are giving another repeated training stimulus it will decrease the performance it will, the muscle will get fatigued but in this case if we are giving a rest there will be full recovery in 2 or 3 weeks but in case of overtraining if you are giving a training training stimulus there will be in, there is a, and there an inadequate recovery time or inadequate recovery again you are giving a repeated training it will leads to staleness and decrease in the performance and there won't be any recovery at rest there won't, it won't recover at rest so three terms we have to understand that overload overreaching and overtraining 
Now pathogenesis. Pathogenesis, there are lots of theories are there regarding the pet, there are different hypotheses are there regarding the pathogenesis or pathology of overtraining syndrome. The first one is an exercise induced immunosuppression. Suppression. That is, if an acute bout of exercise produces similar, if you are giving an acute bout of exercise, there is a similar response to infection is there. That is, there is an increase in the number of leukocytes. Between the 3 and 2 72 hours of post exercise, virus and bacteria may threaten the immune system and increase the risk of infection. Now, if there is an insufficient recovery, there will be a cumulative effect and the because and this may lead to an overtraining syndrome. So, the first theory regarding overtraining syndrome is exercise induced immunosuppression. That is, if you are doing a bout of exercise, acute bout of exercise, the symptoms, the response is similar to that of infection. That is, increase in number of leukocytes can be seen. Now, between if and between 3 to 72 hours of post exercise, there is more threat to the, there will be a threat to the immune system and there is an increased risk of infection. And if you are, if there is an insufficient recovery, so accumulate as an accumulative effect, there will be a chance of an overtraining syndrome. The second tissue, second, uh, the second the, uh, hypothesis regarding the overtraining syndrome is the tissue trauma. So, once you are giving a sternus exercise, training is sternus and exhaustive, athlete increases the exercise volume or intensity and abruptly and there is no effective, uh, effective recovery, if there is no enough recovery is not there, it will lead to micro trauma in the tissue. There are markers of tissue damage can usually seen in this according to their hypothesis after once there is an overuse injury there is markers of tissue trauma can be seen like creatinine kinase, serum urea, myoglobin, 3-methyl histidine, histidine, C-reactive protein etc. is usually seen. That is according to their hypothesis there are tissue trauma is occurring in case of overtraining syndrome. So, overload injuries due to repetitive micro trauma present a more gradual onset symptom compared to an acute injuries. That is, repetitive uh, forces are encountered on landing and push off must be considered and fatigued muscle resulting from adapting to the higher training load may react in the same manner as weak muscle, weak muscles and become strained. Next type of hypothesis is because of high impact forces. Muscles that contract quickly to absorb force are likely to use, likely to, uh, likely the source of microtrauma. So, the, if there is an increased ground reaction forces, an eccentric contraction may result in lots of muscle fiber injury and concentric contraction which leads to hypoxia and even muscle ischemia also. So, the, because of this circulating monocytes are not activated and CTK is not elevated. So, high impact forces may be the cause of uh, this, uh, this overtraining is may be due to this high impact forces. This either hypothesis is called cytokine hypothesis is the and there are some other hypotheses like pro-inflammatory hypothesis, hypo, uh, hypothesis also the and the treatment and prevention. So, anyway the uh, treatment uh, the, the it can be prevented by various methods. The overtraining syndrome can be prevented by various methods. The first and pro uh, the important thing is that increase the recovery days give the proper timing for recovery, the person, let the person to recover and then start the next session of training. Then periodization of training, there is a principle called periodization and uh, periodization principle that has to be adopted. Now, the next one is that increase variety of training, instead of doing a single type of training, 
and increase add some more different types of training the ensure volume and uh, ensure volume and uh, intensity in inverse relationship that is if you are increasing volume decrease the intensity it's in a, it should go in an equilibrium model and avoid higher intensity training for a long, long period of time and avoid, uh, avoid high intensity over a high intensity training over a prolonged period of time in the resistance training avoid completing every set of every exercise in every set, uh, session so if you are giving a resistance training you do you, no need to stick to the complete each and every set of exercise training and avoid overworking at one area and avoid excess eccentric work this also may leads to a uh, overtraining syndrome and best way to minimize the risk of overtraining is to follow the cyclic training procedures alternating easy moderate and hard periods of training that is you have to alternate easy moderate and hard periods of training so the best way to minimize the risk of overtraining is to follow the cyclic training procedures like alternating easy moderate and hard period of training so that the proper recovery time will be available and the person can recover by himself so we were discussing about the overtraining syndrome it is the imbalance between the stress training and athlete's tolerance to stress and uh, it is more susceptible to the to more uh, uh, commonly seen uh, among the endurance athlete those who are like swimming running those who are doing swimming cycling etc and a, and an athlete with uh, amateur coaches or a highly motivated goal oriented individual and a person who want to make jump to a next level these people are most susceptible for popula susceptible population for overtraining syndrome and the cause the risk of overtraining syndrome there may be prolonged poor performance there is more chance of injury illness and premature retirement then we discussed about the symptoms of overtraining syndrome the symptoms may be physiological psychological immunological and biochemical physiologically there may be decreased performance loss of coordination fatigue chronic fatigue uh, prolonged recovery psychologically there is depression emotional instability fear of co competition etc immunologically immune system that is uh, there is more susceptible to injury there are more susceptible to infections and biochemically there are lots of biochemical changes also will be there and it also affect the overtraining syndrome also affect the autonomic nervous system there will be an increase in the heart uh, resting heart rate and bp and there will be loss of appetite and emotional instability and then we discussed about the there are two types of overuse overtraining syndrome is the and we discussed about both syndrome and how the then we compared the the difference between overload overreaching and overtraining and there are different uh, hypotheses are uh, the regarding the how the over syndrome occurs the hypotheses include exercise induced immunosuppression tissue trauma and uh, tissue trauma high impact forces the cytokine hypothesis is the and pro inflammatory cytokine hypothesis is the exercise prescription then we discussed about the different hypotheses uh, hypothesis include exercise induced immunosuppression tissue trauma then high impact uh, high impact forces and cytokine hypothesis are the then we discussed about what are the treatment and prevention how to prevent anyway the best way of treatment is allow cyclic training procedures that is then alternating easy moderate and hard period of training and there are these are some references you can go through the references and thank you